The Rise of Fall Guys is a story of a fantastically colorful bean game that flip-flopped and face-planted itself into the hearts and minds of millions. Fall Guys revolves around players being contestants on a fantastical game show, each having to survive various elimination-style mini-games, culminating down to a face-off between the top players, each gunning to be crowned the victor of that episode. Netos has said episode? That's what the individual matches in Fall Guys are called. <laughs> Kinda cute, right? Speaking of cute, the game is honestly incredibly cute to look at, with all the bright and fun colors being a visual feast for the eyes. There are tons of not only really cool costumes and color combinations and patterns that you can do, but the general style and look of the levels and minigames is all really appealing, not only at the first glance, but throughout multiple playthroughs. This cute and colorful style extends itself to all parts of the game, from the menus, the shop, and even the loading screens. The game not only has amazing visual design and perspective and art direction, but I also feel like it has really good sound design. The game is super expressive with its audio and all its noises that the Fall Guys lit out from really who knows where, but they're all hilarious. Every grunt, yell, flip and flop is really satisfying and gives you that perfect kind of slapstick feel. And that's just the sounds the Fall Guys make themselves. When we talk about the soundtrack, the soundtrack is amazing. Whether you're sitting in the menu, in the loading screen, waiting for one of the rounds to start up, there's tons of iconic, really good sound bits that you can get throughout the entirety of your playing experience, which, to me personally, really enhanced the overall time I spent playing the game. Getting into gameplay, I feel like one of the biggest appeals of the game is how easily it lends itself to slapstick. Your tumble man will get flipped, tossed, and rolled around in tons of different ways that are each really entertaining. That is up until the wacky physics cost you a crown, but we'll touch a little bit more on that later. I feel that Fall Guys is at its best when you lean into its absurdity, and you set out to enjoy not just the clean, well-executed victory, but the crushing slapstick fuster cluck defeats. I feel like Fall Guys gets a lot less fun whenever you start caring too much about winning. But why does it matter to win so much in the first place? Well, let's quickly go over the currency system present in Fall Guys. As you play, you encounter two types of currency. Kudos, which you get via just playing the game and getting through rounds, and crowns, which are earned exclusively from winning episodes, besides getting a one or two free ones through the battle pass. Most of the items in this shop can be bought using kudos. However, there are higher rarity, usually limited time items, which will cost you crowns. The price of these items usually range from one to five crowns from what we've been seeing so far. Since I've been playing on Steam, most of these higher tier crown items are references to other games from the platform like Team Fortress 2, Portal, Half-Life, and the others being references to other Devolver Digital games like Enter the Gungeon and Hotline Miami. They're all super cool, definitely making crowns a precious resource. Although I have gotten a few wins, and even some back-to-back, -back, I felt like if I put too much value in getting the shiny crown, every slapstick event that would happen to me during a round was not just a funny mishap, but instead a direct spit in the face via the RNG gods. It's not just the wacky physics that sometimes leave me a little sour in my search for crowns, but since I've been playing solely in the PC version, coming across hackers and seeing them just run over the entire game kind of really dampened my mood as I was trying to get my here and honestly grind for my items. Besides hackers, there was also a few other problems that kind of came up here and there that didn't leave my experience as good as it probably should have been. During the initial launch period of Fall Guys, the servers were frankly not prepared for the amount of players that would log on and try to play their video game, which I've always felt is an interesting problem. On one hand, you're excited because tons of people want to play your game, but on the other hand, you're terrified because so many people want to play your game that they're breaking your game and nobody can play your game. Thankfully, since the time of recording, it seems like the server issues have stabilized, and I haven't really had any sort of disconnects or drops since I've been playing recently. Now that the servers seem to be stable, the next big problem the developers have to tackle after the hacking issue is hit detection especially when it comes to gravity. The tail tag games can be maddening sometimes, as people seem to grab your tail from light years away while you can be practically one in the same beam as somebody else and still not grab their tail. Fall Guys has received tons of praise and wide success, but is it all warranted? In this segment of Mob Marder, we're going to take a quick look at the overall reviews of the game and see if my views line up with that of the common mob or if I'm martyred or my opinions. Note that these reviews are being pulled from Steam as that is a platform that I primarily played on. In less than a month, Fall Guys has crossed 7 million units sold on Steam and has become the most downloaded PS Plus game of all time. And if that's not saying anything, Fall Guys is currently sitting at an 81% very positive review score on Steam, and this is with over 125,000 different reviews at the time of recording. So, what do people think? The pros are pretty much what we could have expected. 
lot of people think the game is cute, it's fun for the whole family, it's great with friends, and it gives you a good hearty laugh. One of the more underrated things that I did still see some people bring up is the fact the game is very fast. And this is something that I noticed during my first playthrough as well. You could get into a game, not know what you're doing, lose, get out of the game, and queue up and be in another game in a really, really short amount of time, which was great. You know, you don't have time to sit here and think about how bad that last defeat was if you can immediately jump into the game and start thinking about this next win which is an amazing quality for a game like this to have. Now, some of the cons are also kind of what we expect and have touched up on a little bit. The biggest complaint from people is the cheaters. They cannot stand the hacking, and they feel like it is ruining the game, and it is the game fails for any reason they think it would be because of all the hacking going on. Now, one of the other common problems people have had with the game is the lack of mini games, or maybe that there's too many bad mini games. As an example, a lot of people bring up that mini games like Rollout and Perfect Match are simply too easy, too long, or too boring. While other groups of people complain that the team mini games are just way too aimless and chaotic, as an example is being things like Egg Scramble and Hoarders. Like I mentioned earlier, we still have the hit detection issues, which makes the tail tag games incredibly frustrating and unfair at times. There were a lot of early complaints about the servers crashing and the game being literally unplayable, but I feel like at this point, those issues have been resolved. The last issue that I want to bring up is kind of the collector issue, and this one has to do with me personally. I love getting all the nice shiny things, which meant that one of these cool exclusive skins came out, I really wanted to get them. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time to sit here and grind out all the necessary wins every two days to get all the costumes which left me in a place where I felt really bad because I wasn't playing the game enough and because I wasn't an expert at the minigames. So that's why earlier I mentioned that it might be best if you just give in to the absurdity and let yourself have fun with winning and losing. Because if that's the case, even if you don't get the shiny items, you'll still have a good time. And who knows? Those skins may come back in rotation one day. And if that's the case, then we have nothing to worry about. So taking everything into account, what is the verdict? What is my honest review of Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout? Honestly, I think Fall Guys is a gem. It came at a perfect time when the world needed a little bit more of levity, fun, color, and laughter. And it has succeeded and delivered on a lot of those fronts. Do I think you should take this game hyper competitively? Unless you are a gamer god, no, I don't think so. Because it is going to take some grinding, some time, and some research to really be able to get all of these wins. But if that's something you're interested in doing, I wholeheartedly give you the big thumbs up for it. Now, if you just want to play casually with friends, this game is even better yet. You can just log on, play for a little bit, have a good time, have some laughs, and then call it a day. There's tons of cute things to collect, even if you don't get all the crowns. And if you just go in there with a good mindset, you're going to be listening to the soundtrack, laughing at all the Fall Guys, and next thing you know, you've had a good time. Fall Guys is still very early in its lifetime, at the time of recording still being under a month old. So it has plenty of time to not only fix the issues, that it currently has, but to prevent further issues and be even better still. I look forward to not only the next upcoming season in October, but to the future seasons past that. This was my honest review of Fall Guys. I wish you well, and I hope you flip-flop and faceplant your way into a crown.